What's going on there guys? Good afternoon. It is me, well, the Earthmaster here on the live stream uh, with an update video on this beautiful Wednesday, March 9th, 2022 date, about uh, 11.53 a.m. So technically, if you want to get technical, still morning out here in the West Coast area. 2.1, the latest quake on the globe in the big island of Hawaii. Looks like right around the southeast area of the big island. Let's go ahead and check out the latest movement here on the USGS map. We're going to start off here with the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory map. Just going over the quick updates here of the volcanoes here on the big island. Everything still appears to be about the same far as any uh, alerts and whatnot. Kilauea still starts or uh, sitting at the orange and watch level. Mauna Loa continues at the yellow and advisory far as the updates go. From the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory folks there from March 9th, which is today, right? Uh, summit eruption of Kilauea Volcano within the crater continued over the past 24 hours. All recent activity has been confined to the smaller active lake within the crater. And there are no indications of activity migrating elsewhere on Kilauea. So it's been like this for quite a while. Uh, it's got this little pause stages and then it kicks up once again and it pauses and does this over and over. Uh, far as uh, Mauna Loa goes, uh, the latest one was back in March 3rd, uh, not erupting, rates of seismicity remain slightly elevated above long-term background levels, but not, have not changed significantly over the past week. Looking at the earthquake activity, well, Big Island, nothing showing up here on the 2.5 and above. Uh, the all magnitudes shows uh, there's that one earthquake, the 2.1 southeast region, like I kind of thought it was. Uh, Mauna, Loa, Mauna Loa looks pretty quiet as far as volcanic uh, seismic activity up there goes. And uh, of course, Kilauea up here, not a whole lot of movement on the map here when it comes to earthquake activity. But uh, 31 earthquakes here around the southeast region of the Big Island. And that's uh, very typical for the uh, that area. Looking at the big picture out here, seeing a pretty good increase in movement around the Middle America Trench and southward. Uh, let's go ahead and check out this activity up here. Uh, right around the Guatemala area, looks like inland had a uh, well, well west of the Guatemala City area, 4.1 at 81.5 kilometers. I believe this is a subduction zone quake. It's pretty deep into the uh, Middle America Trench. Seen some activity further to the south as well. This one upstream though, closer to the locked area, 33.4 kilometers, but still into the uh, Middle America Trench section here uh, with that uh, 4.3. And a little bit of activity well off the coast here uh, into the Guatemala Basin. It looks like 5.0 kicking up here around the uh, uh, area in the uh, in this region, the Guatemala Basin area. Let's go ahead and check out this activity. Panama, I believe this is from last night. This 4.6 came in there late into this area. Some activity ramping up here into the South America re region along the uh, Peru-Chile Trench with a 4.9. And also down here, 4.8 at 111.2 kilometers. So some movement uh, kind of kicking up there over the last 24 hours. Seen some activity up here in the West Chile Rise. That one was from last night. Haven't seen any further activity here in this region though. South Sandwich Islands area, 5.5 earlier uh, this morning uh, at uh, 10 kilometers there to the southern end of the trench area. Kind of right there, southern end. So still quite a bit of adjustment and movement going on down here. Uh, following last year's eight-pointer in that region. Western part of the country, uh, seeing some activity kick up into the Cascadia subduction zone. Now, remember, we have been seeing uh, quite a bit of trimmer activity specifically here at the Northern California region. The trimmer map from last night showed about 14 epicenters of trimmer at the southern end of the Cascadia. Prior to that, we had about uh, four or five days or so of uh, 100 to 200 epicenters each day in the region of the southern section of the uh, Cascadia subduction zone. So ultimately, we expect earthquake activity to kind of ramp up upstream. And this is definitely upstream with the magnitudes there. Uh, seeing these uh, 2.5, 2.3 at 26 kilometers, 19 kilometers. Uh, still deep into the subduction zone, but not that 35 kilometer deep when you get into the trimmer, kind of where it's just uh, slipping down there, if you will. The uh, uh, Yeah, the trimmer further down into the uh, subduction zone, well down there. Uh, of course, as you go upstream here, west on the map, 
it gets shallower when in terms of uh, the subduction zone itself so uh, that's kind of what we're seeing here a little bit of uh, uh, action reaction from the tremor that we've been seeing and the subsequent earthquake activity upstream but but don't uh, don't let you uh, I don't want to say that this isn't good or or if it's bad but I do firmly believe that the tremor activity does add pressure up here along the locked area hence the uh, earthquake activity that we're seeing upstream so uh, the the big ones just inching inching closer and closer there along the uh, locked section of the Cascadia is just gaining some more tension uh, throughout the Pacific Northwest one earthquake all these others look like query blasts uh, looks like maybe two earthquakes here outside of Seattle near Hood Sport 13.4 uh, kilometers another one here to the uh, northeast of Seattle 1.7 uh, let's go back here to California and see what we got going on here in the Geyser region. South of Clear Lake, activity ramping up, 48 earthquakes over the last 24 hours. Of course, hydrothermal operations out there, right? Um, quite a bit. Looking at the Bay Area, fairly quiet for the most part. A little bit of activity south of Livermore and the San Leandro area. Looks like just off of the uh, Calaveras Fault and over here around this other section here. The Greenville Fault Zone, some microquakes that kind of extending down into the creeping section of San Andreas Fault where we're seeing a little micro swarm of uh, earthquake activity today and uh, some movement across the board when you're looking at uh, pretty much Lake Tahoe southward into the Ridgecrest area just some spotty activity, nothing significant to note today um, not a whole lot going on in that section of the state down south as well, no major swarming going on. One little earthquake within the last hour. Otherwise, just some spotty movement up and down the San Jacinto Fault Zone. One little earthquake here at the southern end of the San Andreas Fault. Right at the uh, Brawley Seismic Zone, a 1.4 near Bombay Beach. Salton Sea area. I was just out there uh, uh, last year checking out the earthquake swarm that was occurring in this area of the uh, state. And let me tell you, that was not... Uh, not a pleasant trip down there. Let me tell you, I came back sick after breathing in that air for a couple days. Oklahoma, what do we got? Or uh, Kansas, Selena. That was from, uh, well, that was from yesterday. 3.0 and then a 1.4, it looks like. A query blast down here in Oklahoma. Otherwise, most of the oil fields and the operations all look pretty quiet right now. Uh, New Madrid zone. Seeing a 2.2. Uh, a this one's a newer quake. But uh, earlier this morning, um, near Manila, Arkansas, I've actually never heard of that. Definitely on the Arkansas border or Arkansas line here, 18.5 kilometers into the New Madrid zone. Of course, uh, this is a major player in producing some significant size earthquakes historically and possibly in the future as well. Been a little bit of time of uh, accumulated stress since the last big one struck in the 1800s. Uh, early 1800s, but uh, yeah, it's uh, definitely a major player in uh, future quakes, no doubt. I believe, firmly believe that. Let's see what else we got here. <clears throat> East Coast, pretty quiet. Puerto Rico, uh, a little bit of movement today, not uh, anything significant like we've seen last week, just about 17 earthquakes or so within this region of Puerto Rico. I love my coffee. I'm always, I always got it right next to my computer. <clears throat> uh, let's see so what else we got here let's shoot around the flat scale map here check out Alaska go ahead and zoom up here to the northern part here of the Pacific plate North American plate boundary showing uh, quite a few microquakes up and down the board uh, looks very typical though for earthquake activity throughout the Anchorage area up through Denali Cook Inlet area seeing uh, some further activity to the west here uh, no major earthquakes to report in this region of the world. Uh, the Japan Trench, Kuril Kamchaka Trench, all remain fairly quiet. One earthquake here from last night off the coast of Russia into the northern end of the Kuril Kamchaka Trench, deep at 64.6 kilometers. The other sections here look pretty quiet. Uh, western rim of the, or western part of the Philippine Plate, a little bit of activity, including a pretty deep 4.0. Uh, just south of Japan there, 346 kilometers and one earthquake here around Taiwan. Uh, we did see a little bit of swarming there kick up yesterday. And over the last uh, couple days or so, 
uh, in this area and also over here around the Japan area seen a bunch of fours kick up here kind of thought something was going to pop here with all this activity I've seen some upper fours and some lower fours that was uh, over the 24 hour window period so been a day or so a couple days of that activity but uh, still seen that little migration of westward movement here uh, with the swarming towards the Taiwan area so still got to watch that uh, further down south, Philippines, 5.1 from last night. And the Fiji Tonga area, look at that, very quiet. Only one 5.1 here. That one uh, occurring last night, it looks like as well in the New Zealand area, 77.8 kilometers into the, uh, well, what do we got down here? The Hikurangi subduction zone, right? Major player in uh, possibly producing some large quakes. Kermadec Trench has seen quite a bit of movement over the last week. Uh, around the Tonga area and also the Tonga Trench region southward, all seeing quite a bit of deep movement, including that 6.1, that super deep 581 kilometer deep earthquake uh, a couple days ago in that area. Let's see what else we got here. China, one little earthquake up here, looks like a little 4.4. And uh, the UAE region with a 4.5. Uh, strike in that area. <clears throat> Mediterranean Sea looks pretty quiet. Greenland, Iceland, and aside from this one little earthquake down in the South Sandwich Trench area, the uh, Atlantic Ocean looks pretty quiet here. Uh, remember Trimmer map? That's from yesterday. Had about 14 epicenters of Trimmer along the southern end of the Cascadia. We'll see what that looks like tonight, folks. Uh, I'm sure that will still be continuing here with the, um, of course, with the subsequent earthquake activity we're seeing upstream. Um, into the Northern California area. Yellowstone. What do we got here in Yellowstone? Not a whole lot going on here, folks. Things have tapered off, kind of calmed down, at least in this area of the park. We are seeing a little bit of activity, a little, little bit, very little. This is just minor uh, earthquake activity over here around this area of Yellowstone National Park. You can see these uh, little spikes here in the red and the blue indicating that uh, seismic activity being picked up by the seismograph, but nothing significant going off there today at Yellowstone National Park. Moving on, what else we got here? Check out the uh, GeoNet server here uh, with New Zealand, just to verify and see if there's any other uh, subsequent activity kicking up around the Hikurangi. There's that 5.1 uh, from yesterday. So far as uh, the, the uh, weak and above magnitudes, that's about the only one from yesterday. Let's check out the sun. Solar weather activity kind of ramping up a little bit on the Earth side. At least, I mean, it looks somewhat impressive with these massive sunspots, but you can have sunspots three times this big. And if the dynamics are not there, uh, if, they're, if the um, magnetic fields here are stable with them, uh, well, they're not going to pop off any significant flaring. 2960, a pretty significant size sunspot. And I'm sure you could see that with a uh, with a solar backyard telescope, I'm sure. Uh, you don't want to do it with any telescope. You need to definitely have the uh, correct ones, obviously. But uh, it's a pretty big one, 2960, sticking out there pretty uh, significantly. Right now, solar flare threat only remains because of the stability of those sunspots at 80% for a sea flare. 15% chance for an M flare and 1% for an X flare. Uh, activity over the next three nights or so. Three day geomagnetic forecast, calm conditions here, but that could change. Uh, coronal hole, not a whole lot of coronal holes facing us here. As you can see, 65, uh, just a little bitty one. Not gonna provide us with any uh, significant uh, activity at all. So I know we got sunspot activity, but uh, just the dynamics are not there to produce any significant flaring uh looks like there might be uh, a regional threat of an isolated sea flare during the next 24 hours according to the solarham.net site otherwise uh it's pretty quiet folks on the sun what else we got i think that's about it folks i'm gonna jump off here enjoy the day i hope everyone else enjoys their day out there as well and uh, we will be back a little bit later on this evening folks with an update uh on this uh beautiful wednesday out here in northern california it's supposed to be in the mid 70s once again so i'm gonna go out and 
do a little bit of garden, garden, gardening, if I can spit that out there. I think my coffee is a little bit too strong, but that's okay. Kind of uh, thinking um, faster than my words will come out. All right, have a good day, folks. Enjoy your afternoon. We'll catch you later. Peace out.